Hi everybody, this is uh, Dave again, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, modeling uh, an error prototype or geographical location. Now, some people get really hung up on this. They will say they want to um, model a small town serviced by the Santa Fe Railroad in 1903, and if they put on a piece of equipment that didn't exist until uh, 1905, they will freak out and think they're the worst people in the world. I don't want to do that. I like historical model railroading. I like modern model railroading. I like uh, railroads that exist today, and I like railroads that haven't existed in a hundred years. So I said to myself, how am I going to do this with some semblance of uh, realism? You know, you it's really hard to have a small steam engine switcher running across the uh, running across in front of I don't know a skyscraper or, or a mall. So I so said, what am I going to do? I thought about it a little bit, and I said to myself, here in New England, we have a lot of old train stations that may or may not still be used, but they still exist. We have a um, lot of towns that might look the same in 1900 as they do today, and I'm actually going to show you an example here. Um, we'll talk about this picture in a minute, because I want to talk about my own local train station here. But here... This is Brattleboro, this is Brattleboro, Vermont, which is in southern Vermont, uh, not uh, too far from the Massachusetts border. And this is a black and white picture, and you can obviously tell it's a modern black and white picture, but um, this scene may have looked the same in 1900 as it does today. And here's this uh, picture today. A lot of New England towns still look like this. And... That gave me the idea that if I built something based on scenery around me, I could easily have a steam engine on this bridge just as well as I could have a modern uh, General Electric uh, diesel locomotive. So that actually made me interested in modeling uh, the New England area. That, and I live here. The next thing, looking at some of these pictures here, a lot of the train stations in New England ex still exist. For example, this is the train station in... Brattleboro, Brattleboro, Vermont, actually across the street right from where I took that other picture. It's now an art museum. The lower floor is still a train station, but the upper floor is converted to an art museum because they only needed a platform. There's only one train comes by a day there now, but still, uh, still the uh, building exists. Where I live, this is a picture I took, again, uh, actually with a film camera. That's a cyanotype, and that's a 19th century printing process. Uh, but that's our train station designed by H.H. H. Richardson, who also designed Trinity Church in Boston and several other famous uh, buildings, famous architect. Um, that building actually, despite how dilapidated it may look, and I got another picture that I did not take myself, pulled off the internet, was recently purchased by the uh, city who was going to, who was already stabilized the building. They're hoping to redevelop that into uh, a new use and a new... Uh, new lease on life here. So it's really neat. The building was uh, in very poor condition for many, many years, but it is um, a beautiful train station, and uh, I hope to see it uh, in beautiful working condition again. So wonderful, uh, wonderful new lease on life, that life this building just got. Another building uh, I could show you here is, this is the train station in Great Barrington, Vermont. What Vermont, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Sorry, I, I just I just moved it uh, 40 miles north of where it is. But um, the Great Barrington train station no longer was a train station. It's actually a lawyer's office now, and they replaced the roof with a metal roof. Probably was a slate roof at one time. Still an interesting building, and still has uh, trains passing it on a regular basis. Um, I was not actually trespassing. There's a, a footpath that goes across the front there. I recommend that you do not trespass on railroad property. Okay, Shame on me for putting this picture here, but um, kind of ducking my head around the corner. And actually in Great Barrington and a lot of uh, train stations, there's a tunnel that goes under, it goes from the tracks underneath out to the street. That's the entrance to the tunnel. See the original tile roof? I don't think this building is going to be here much longer. That's missing support columns. 
buildings rotting, coming apart. So who knows how long that'll be there? Who knows if the if it's owned by the railroad or the train station? But the tunnel is filled with art. Kind of a neat, uh, neat New England sort of uh, form of uh, let's all get together and be uh, happy New England liberalism. But that's um, just that, that. Actually, if I kept walking, go up those stairs, I'd end up in that little building you saw up above there. And the tunnel itself would probably last another two, three hundred years. It's all stone. So archaeologists will be digging that up someday. The building might be gone, but that tunnel will still exist. And actually, I'll, it's another one of these buildings. I'll probably show you in a different video here. Um, some different things. And Bennington, Vermont. That's where my mind was when I said Great Barrington, Vermont. But Bennington, Vermont converted their railroad station into a restaurant. And uh, there's no train tracks anywhere near this restaurant anymore. Um, so it doesn't have trains going by it anymore, but it's still a neat uh, <clears throat> neat little stop there. Uh, actually, a very decent restaurant to have eaten there a number, number of times. So that's sort of my breakdown of why I picked New England. So easily, I could model a scene with any of these railroad stations that I showed you and any of the scenery I showed you and have a diesel locomotive or a... Uh, steam locomotive going by and a lot of larger freight yards still have leftover steam equipment sitting around you could have a coaling tower in a modern in a modern yard they didn't they didn't just tear them down the day that um, they stopped running steam some of them I know that I think there's still one in New Haven at uh, uh, not too far from uh, the New Haven uh, Union Station there so some neat things there to keep in mind and I'll talk a little bit more about um, kind of railroads that I want to uh, model here. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about um, what railroad I want to model here. Now, my little layout track plan you see here could be a part of a larger, what we'd call a class one uh, railroad. And that's a very large railroad that you can think of that as a good example would be like the uh, BNSF, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, CXX, CSX, Union Pacific, railroads like that. Um, but you know what, I kind of have this vision of having my own little independent railroad that maybe just services some small towns or small areas. So I went into the uh, Class 2 railroads, which are regional railways. Uh, in New England, we have one called Pan Am Railways, used to be Gulfer Transportation Systems. Um, so it's a little small uh, regional railway that might just service a small area. There's also something called the Class 3 railroad, which this might be. Class 3 railroad would be um, local service, local freight trains, uh, maybe from one town to another. I know in Massachusetts we have one called the Grafton and Upton Railroad that's ex actually existed uh, since 1873 and basically is a railroad that runs between Grafton and Upton, Massachusetts. It uh, connects with the CXX and uh, Pan Am Railways and uh, I, think, I think that's who they connect with and just service industry along that line. Um, it's just kind of a neat little little thing here. So this might be a little bit of both. Now the locomotive I purchased for my railroad is a Boston and Maine uh, diesel locomotive. And the Boston and Maine Railroad was the largest uh, railroad in northern New England. And it existed from, actually technically as a corporation it still exists, but as a separate entity, it existed from 1836 to 1983. And it merged into Gulford Rail Systems that became Pan Am Rail Systems. Parts are spun off and parts, some of its lines are now part of the MBTA commuter rail, uh, things like that. But um, it was a uh, Class 1 railroad. Now Pan Am Railways is a Class 2 railroad. Um, sort of a railroad that sort of interested me because of some uh, stories my father had told me about, about that railroad. So... Um, Boston and Maine is, uh, actually, it still exists as a wholly owned, owned subsidiary. They don't use the name, but they have all the, uh, it's a successor corporation. Um, the other main, the other two main historical um, railroads in New England were the uh, New York Central. And actually, the railroad station in uh, Bennington, Vermont, was a New York Central railroad station. And New York Central merged with the famous Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, in uh, the 1960s, late 1960s, and formed um, Penn Central, and that also that later became part of Conrail when that empire collapsed. 
the New Haven Rail, the New the New York New Haven and Hartford Railroad, 1872 to 1969, also merged into Penn Central, kind of nicknamed the New Haven here, was probably the largest uh, railroad in New England, servicing everywhere from New York City into uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, all the way up, to, all the way out to Chicago, up into um, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, very large railway, and they actually had a lot of subsidiary railroads that they owned, such as the Boston and Albany, and all these small little railroads. So really, on my railroad, if I want to stay true to New England, I can throw on Boston and Maine, Boston and Albany, New York Central, Hartford, New Haven, all these old historical um, railroads. I could also put on CXX locomotives, Pan Am locomotives, or from my fictional town in uh, New England, rural New England someplace, probably western Massachusetts, the Berkshires of Vermont, have my own little fictional um, branch railroad, little short line railroad that services this town. And they may, may come down, pick up the railroad cars from the main railroad down here in the morning and come and deliver them to different industries around the town during the day and park the railroad overnight. So that's sort of my thoughts on track planning there and why um, I think uh, I have every right to model any era I want to er model and any loco location I want to model, but the location that fit me best from my vision of how I want to run my railroad was uh, a New England town because I could model any era I want interchangeably. So uh, that's how that works for me. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a good day.